Number 76. The phosphorus pentoxide used to produce phosphoric acid for cola, soft drinks, is prepared by burning phosphorus in oxygen. Fun fact. Letter A. What is the limiting reactant when 0.200 moles of P4 and 0.200 moles of O2 react according to this equation? Okay. So, you know the drill. We got to write this out big, right? P4 plus 5O2 yields P4 H, uh, P4O10. Now, I already see that they put a 5 here, right? Which means that this is this is balanced, so whoop, what happened to that guy? But if you want, you can pause the video and see if it's balanced. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what I'm given. And for both of these, they gave me 0 0.200 moles of each. I have to find out which one out of these is the limiting reactant. Remember, a limiting reactant is always one of the reactants that are on the left side of the yield sign. Now, in order to find this out, usually what I do is I like to make a little box. So I write, I put a box or a divider between the two reactants, and then I put a line to make it kind of like a four-tiered little box thingy here. Now, I label it as follows. I say, I have, and then I have, I need. So the thing we're going to have to find out to find out the limiting reactant is which one of these, you know, is the limiting reactant? Well, duh, right? But what you're going to do is you're going to take the one that you have. It doesn't matter which one you want to start with. But if you choose P4, right, if you choose to take 0.2 moles of P4, you're going to find out how much you need for the other reactant. So you would find out how much you need of O2. Or if you take the 0 0.202, you will find out how much you need of P4 by doing our little stoichiometry here. We've done this time and time again, but since we're using moles, we don't really have to worry about the grams just yet. So I can get rid of this part. Whoop. Okay. So if I just do a mole to mole ratio, right? And it doesn't really matter which one you start with. I guess I'll go with the, you know, the moles of P4. So I'm going to erase A, because that was generic, and I'm going to say that I have P4, 0 0.200 moles, and I'm just going to find out how many moles of O2 I can make. So let's just do this quick. Good practice. 0 0.200 moles of P4. When you're converting, you just make that ratio, right? The mole of P4 goes on the bottom, and the mole of O2 goes on the top. Multimole -mole conversions of different compounds or molecules are always the balanced equation, the BE. Those are your coefficients in the front. But for P4, I don't have one, which means that there's one P4. And then in front of the O2, there's a five. So I'm going to put a one for the P4 and for five O2s. For every one mole of P4, I need five moles of O2. Cancel out the units that you can and just times, right? So 0.2 times five is just one. So you have one mole of O2. That's the number that's going to go here. So I have one mole of O2, or you could just say one mole. Now you kind of forget about all the math that you just did. So I'm just going to kind of get rid of this. Pause the video if you want to write it down, but I'm just getting, you know, getting rid of it. Boop. And now we just need to analyze what's going on here. Is O2 the limiting reactant? Well, the limiting reactant is always the one that's used up completely, and you will not have any left over. If you have 0.2 moles, and you need one mole, you need way more than what you have, is there going to be any excess? No. So that's the question that you ask yourself. Is there excess? Since you need more than what you have, you're going to use all this up. You're like in debt 0.8 moles, right? 0.8 plus 0.2 is 1. So is there any excess? In this case, no. 
And if the answer is no, that is your limiting reactant. But if you did have excess in which this number is smaller than what you have, then the other compound would be the limiting reactant. So the limiting reactant in this case is the O2. Okay, so maybe I'll just put here, we'll just put, uh, what's the limiting reactant? We'll just say O2. Okay, so there's the first answer to letter A. Now, I want to calculate the percent yield if 10 grams of P4O10 was isolated. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's get rid of this chart, right? Because now we're going to be working with the P4O10. So let's see, I'm just going to get rid of this amount. Cool. I'm going to get rid of this. And let's see. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. Now, since the O2 is the limiting, that's the only one that I care about. So I don't care about the P4 amount. So goodbye. We don't care about that. Now we need to find out how much is P4 O10, right? Because percent yield is this formula. It's right here. Percent yield always equals actual yield divided by theoretical yield. And they told us that there actually produced or was isolated 10 grams in this reaction. So the actual yield was 10.0 grams of the uh, compound. We need to find out what the theoretical yield is. And the theoretical yield is always the one that's found on paper from the limiting reactant. So we just got to go from moles of O2 to grams of P4O10. I need to go to grams because they gave it to me in grams here, so the units have to match. Okay, so let's go. 0 0.200. Actually, I'll put that in black. 0 0.200 moles of O2. Let's make our first ratio. Mole of O2 goes on the bottom. Now I want to find out how much product. So mole of P4 O10 on the top. Mole to mole is the balance equation. Five O2s, so that goes on the bottom. And there's no number here. So that's one. Cross these off. And let's keep going because they want it in grams. So mole of P4 O10 on the bottom grams of P4 O10 up on top. Gram to mole conversion of the same compound is the molar mass on the periodic table. One mole is what the mass is on the periodic table. So I go to the periodic table, I got four phosphorus, so four times 30.97, and then I got 10 oxygen, so 10 times 16, so I get roughly 283.88. These cancel out. And now I'm going to find out my theoretical mass. So 0.2 times that divided by 5. So I get 11.355. I'm going to cut it off after a couple of decimals, and that's grams of P4O10. And that's this answer on the bottom. This was what we would have produced if it was a perfect world in which there was no errors in the laboratory, but that's never true, right? Perfectionism is just a thought. So even in the laboratory, technically we would never be able to produce, you know, uh, perfect amounts, but we can get pretty close, right? 10 is very close to 11. So let's see, percent yield equals, I'm just going to write this out. I got 10 grams up on the top. I got the 11.355 on the bottom. Let's see. 11.355 times 100. And I get a percent yield. So maybe I'll just put it over here. Percent yield equal to 88. And with three sig figs, it should be 
if we care about sig figs, but who cares? I don't, just as long as you get 88 point something. And that's it. So there's your percent yield, 88%, you know, to, in theory, 100%, right? So pretty good, whoever did this, uh, whoever did this lab. Kudos to them. Anyway, thank you so much for reviewing the video. I really hope this has helped. We are finished. And if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button, the like button, and tell your friends and classmates, okay, that this cool, you know, YouTube video, chemistry videos, whatever, you know, has helped you. And I so very appreciate that. Okay, so I'll see you later. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.